try daily fantasy footy today. Pick your starting nine with a $60,000 salary cap and enter one of our free competitions with a $50 prize pool. Moneyball.com.au What is up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to another episode of The Locker Room. I'm here with my man, Gerard Beal. What is going on, bro? What's up, bro? Uh, nah. Is it Gerard or Gerard? Because, like... Yeah. It always gets mispronounced. What is it, really? Oh, actually, um, I actually get this every day. Really? It's, um, <laughs> it's actually Jared. Jared. Jared, but... um. You know, the hardest is when I'm ordering a coffee. Uh, coffee. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, like, oh, what's your name? Oh, Jared. Bro. I always say Jared. Jared? Yeah. I just say D now. Because <laughs> I'm fucking sick of it. I'll say Denon, and they'll be like, David? And I'll be like, Denon, and they'll be like, Dean. And I'll yeah, be like, fuck this, man. I'm wasting... All the, all the minutes that I've wasted in my life added up is at least a day. <laughs> a day of correcting Starbucks cunts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Uh, and I'm pain. sure you can feel I'm your pain. Your pain right? I was speaking to you and Aiken the other day, and he was the exact same. He's like, bro, it's constant. It's a constant struggle <laughs> correcting people how to say my name properly. <laughs> so for all those people with strange names out there, we should start like a hashtag. Yeah. Strange names unite. Hashtag. Yeah, I'm in there, bro. <laughs> <laughs> so, um... What's been going on, bro? Like, you know, you, you have been playing really well. You, you, you went to the Kiwi camp. Before Kiwi camp, you were number 14. You went and played for the Kiwis, killed it, come back. Now you're number four. And it, it's, you've kind of won your position back. I don't know if someone was injured or not, but, you know, whatever. You're playing the best footy you've ever played. So what, what do you reckon it is and how, how are you enjoying it? Yeah, I guess the starts of the season has probably been, you know, different. That's the word I sort of put to it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, the team's been going awesome, and I guess yeah, at the start of the year, I um, had trouble with my hammies, so oh, okay. I um, sort of missed the first game against the Cowboys, mm. and the boys played really well. So um, you know, I sort of had to bide my time to get back in there, and um, you know, I guess through that time, as hard as it was, you know, coming off the bench, um, you know, you sort of learn a lot. Yeah. Like, been put in a different position you sort of forced to make I guess change and for me it was changing the way I, I play or just like that hunger yeah yeah as and you yeah, kind of sound, realise you can like lose it sounds like that cliche like oh I just wanted it more but um yeah no I just had this extra drive and yep yeah um, sort of crazy how yeah the footy roller coaster. um oh, bro. within a few weeks I was yeah able to get back in there and then um like seriously then in the Kiwis and I was <laughs> it's just, man it's crazy it's such a weird yeah, start to the season. It, but the the good thing is that, you know, you're only 26 still, so you're still young as, and yet you've kind of, you felt like what it's like to you know, be in a side that is killing it and having to work your way back into it. So I guess you, and also being number 14, you have you would have learnt different roles as well. So you've kind of, the good thing is at 26, you've kind of played so many positions and now you've got this like full career of experience in all these different positions. Do you feel like that has helped you kind of be a first grader full time kind of thing? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I think, um, well, yeah, just being able to play a lot of positions, uh, I guess, can help helps me a bit. Mm. But um, yeah, I feel like, um, I guess, sort of opened my eyes, as in, like, in footy sense, um, you know, being like a centre, you sort of you can get pigeonholed into just your role. Yeah, but, yeah. But um, I guess being a football player, like opening my eyes to other positions, you know, you sort of just you find ways to get more into the game and, and um, you know, therefore, yeah, trying to become a better player. I guess you also you kind of, like, appreciate how, not easy centre is, but, you know, you've got it pretty good out there compared to you get put in at 14 and it may be in a hooker role every now and then and you're like, fuck, this is tough in the middle. Yeah. So, like, when it, the next time you're out in the centre and you go, like, oh, I might not take a run, I'm feeling a bit tired, you're like, okay, wait a second. I could be in the middle right now getting touched up and having to do this, 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 you know what I mean? Yeah, oh, definitely. I, yeah, you certainly appreciate, um, you know, yeah, what you have. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Oh, bro. That, that's, a, that's a good point. Yeah, you'd rather defend out wide than in the middle. But, uh, <laughs> oh, mate, I but, could never do it. Yeah. I could never do it. They're crazy, crazy people. Um, so you've had like a, I guess, yeah, you've been to three different clubs, but it doesn't really feel like you've bounced around to different clubs because you were at the Broncos for quite a while and then you were at the, the Dragons for three years? Yeah, uh, two. Two. Yeah. And then you went to the Sharks. And then came to the Sharks. and So, yeah, I started at the Bronx and yep. um, well, came through the Broncos system mm. and then, yeah, moved down to the Dragons in 2013. Mm. That year, then 2013, I did my knee, so I missed the whole year. Yeah. And then played 2014 for the Dragons and then, 
yeah, we went at Sharks 2015, and then yeah, this year. Okay. So yeah. It's um, so did you did you grow up in in uh, on the Gold Coast or Brisbane? I grew, up in, grew up in, in Logan. In, in Logan. So oh, okay, yep, yep. Just like like to call it the Gold Coast. <laughs> <laughs> Please, no. that, is, that, is, that is no man's land between <laughs> Gold Coast and Brisbane. <laughs> it's, it's a rough everyone area. sort of closes their eyes as they <laughs> drive through that. <laughs> Brisbane doesn't want Logan, and Gold Coast doesn't want Logan. <laughs> it's, I've got a house near. I've got a house in Callumvale. Far out. Yeah. Nah. So I came. Th- I played my junior footy at Logan Brothers. Yep. And. Um, there's actually been quite a few players um, come through there. Corey Logan. Parker? Yeah, Corey Parker. Cameron Smith? Cameron Smith. Yeah. Um, Josh Papali. Oh, really? Wow, well, okay. Um, there's, there's, yeah, there's a few. And um, for, yeah, for, I guess for such a, you know, an area, quite tough. Um, yeah. Yeah, we've always seemed to produce, and I'm sure there's going to be a lot more players. I guess it's like that tough area and rugby league being such a tough sport kind of does go hand in hand to produce those tough kind of players and and quality players and so you obviously New Zealand you've got New Zealand heritage were you born in New Zealand or just your parents were Kiwi uh, so mum and dad are from New Zealand yep. and then um, they moved over and they had me and my sister yeah, we were born in Brisbane Yep. so um, yeah it's that strange um, you know representing New Zealand oh, I feel like that's home for me even, yeah. you know, even though I was born in Brisbane but I guess because your parents are from there you have that culture at home yeah. so it, it's kind of like you know, you're living in New Zealand culture here in Australia, and obviously you would have gone back quite a bit. Yeah, so that that was obviously the way it was. Um, you know, all our family live in New Zealand. Yep. And you know, still do so. Always back and forth, yep. and and um, also um, there's heaps of Kiwis here, and, or in Brisbane, and that we're yeah, always so around. That yep. You know, yeah, um, surrounding that community. So. Yep. Yeah. No, I um, yeah, very proud to represent New Zealand. It's um, it's it's you you debuted pretty young for New Zealand, didn't you? Twenty. Yeah, um, two thousand eleven. I was twenty one. Twenty one. It's pretty young, man. Fucking hell. Um, so growing up, was it always rugby league, or was it you know? Did you play rugby union? Did you play touch footy? Did you play? Was it you know? As a young kid growing up in Logan, were you always destined to play footy? You reckon, or was it you just enjoyed sport? Were you an athlete? Did you do athletics and stuff like that? Yeah, I was always into my sport. Mm. I guess mainly touch and and league. Yep. And yeah, I guess in in Logan, um, you know, uh, rugby league's massive. And um, can yeah, so came through Bronco system, played touch, played rep for touch, and probably that I was gonna go to rugby um, in my like high school years, late high school years, but I ended up as a yeah sort of weird like. I made this rep team with, um, so the Mid East. Oh, okay, Mid East. Yeah. Yep. Um, I was playing upper grade, and I actually made the team when I I thought I probably might not have made it. And yep. That team was actually pretty good. Um, looking back, it had Izzy Falau, Chris Sandow. Oh wow! You know, quite a few NRL players yep. just in the area. Okay. Yep. Um, if I hadn't made that team, I was going to go rugby. And, oh, uh, okay. Um, so was was it like sort a of just trial, effort? as in the like. Um, similar like medis for yep. rugby but i never ended up doing that because i made that team and then oh wow well, yeah. so you were essentially one you know one team away from going all right well i'll go to rugby union give it a shot kind of thing sort of give it a shot but you know when you're in school you can do both yeah, yeah. so i probably would have still done both but um yeah so that was a weird thing so it's it's always been league and yep. obviously touch sort of in the off season yeah, do you reckon if you know us, uh, a lot of footy players and, and myself as well? If touch footy was as big as rugby league, I, I, I honestly probably would play touch. Eh? Like, as in, as how much I enjoy it. Is that similar for you, or yeah? Like, did you enjoy touch footy as, as much as you enjoyed rugby league? But obviously, there's not really a career path with touch footy. Yeah, oh, I loved it, and all the boys well, that I um, sort of played with yeah. the club, we all loved it. Yeah, you know, it is fun. Um, Man, it's so obviously, good. yeah, you know, you got to. When you come to weighing up with like the career, yeah, um, league leagues obviously you know a lot bigger. Yeah, but uh, I guess it's good to see you know touch starting to take off a lot more now. I think know? the internet's helping it a bit, eh? Because like you can yeah. get videos out there and kind of build a culture around it, and yeah, you know, you've got videos of Sean Johnson tearing teams apart. Oh, you know? exactly. I think um, well, yeah, I've I've noticed that there's a lot more interest in it. Yeah, especially I guess for parents. You know, putting their kids in there, and that's very true. It's, it's contact. Yeah, well, it's good. You know, it's um, you know, essentially, it's rugby league skills. And, yep. You know, it's fun, and 
You don't have to get yeah. friggin' bashed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so growing up, was Broncos always your team? Or, you know, were you just kind of... Was it Who was your team growing up? Uh, I guess, yeah, probably the Broncos. I was, I was pretty much um, whoever won. Yeah. jumped on there <laughs> <laughs> but I guess as I yeah got older in school um, yep. and I was in the Bronco system I, I sort of yeah I felt like I had to support them and, oh okay nah, yeah, but I loved it you know they had the likes of Lockie and yep. Carmichael best gear and everything as well yeah they, you gear. know uh, rolling around school and Nike stuff <laughs> oh right <laughs> thinking that was the man yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So um, yeah, growing up, you know, growing up in Logan, was it was it tough? Was it was it ever a struggle? You know, like for, for myself personally, like my dad worked his ass off. You know, he had to drive to I was you know raised on the Gold Coast, but just just to kind of provide for the family, he was driving to, to Brisbane every day. You know, five six days a week, waking up at four in the morning, getting home at eight at night. So, you know, he had a massive sacrifice to give us kids the opportunity to play for you. What was it like for yourself? Was it was it pretty average or did you struggle for the opportunities you did get or you know what was it like yeah it's actually I uh, probably haven't really been able to um, yeah talk about this yeah. but um, yeah so growing up uh, in Logan um, mum and dad obviously worked really hard and looking back now um, to what they actually did to provide for us yeah. um, there's you know there's a, there's a lot of work so dad worked and he'd, he'd travel a lot yeah probably similar, similar. so he'd yeah, based in Logan he'd drive to the Gold Coast or even out north of Brisbane oh, okay, you know, yep. for work and say they, he was a builder yep. it might be for like six months of the year so he'd always be driving out yeah oh man and building's tough yeah like, tough oh, and man. and um, I remember like uh, mum used to work two jobs so oh, she wow. worked as a like a cleaner uh, housekeeper yep during the day and then at night she'd go to Woolies and she worked night shift far out man. and as a kid you sort of like oh like Still, still complain. Yeah, you complain about maybe not seeing them, not getting this. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But looking back now, it's crazy to think that you know they they do that, and then yeah, Yeah. it's pretty. um, I I guess guess until you have kids yourself, you know, you you wouldn't realize like, oh man, I don't know if I could do that. But then you look at your own kids, you're like, man, I could do anything. Yeah, yeah. Well, so yeah, being a father now um, makes me sort of realize like, oh, you know, like that's how far they're willing to go, and you know, just to provide for us. And you can you can understand it. You can say, all right, well. I'll put myself in their shoes with my kids and I'd probably do the same I have to, if I have to. Yeah, oh, exactly. Yeah. And, um, yeah, obviously a lot of parents out there yep. do that still, you know what I mean? And Especially like Logan, like we you know we make jokes, but Logan is a, like a poorer demographic, you know, that it is a, there's a lot of uh, people, I guess not migrants, but it's a high density of Latinos, high density of Islanders, a lot of Kiwis there. Yeah. So it is a it's a poorer area. So you've got to work. There's not as much opportunity there as as there might be in you know your your richer suburbs in in closer into the city of Brisbane. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And yep. um, well, for me, yeah, I so growing up in that area, I that's all I sort of knew until yeah. I got to probably like high school and then yeah, noticed like and started realizing it like, is okay, quite um a different you know different and hmm. and yeah, and then obviously um yeah, appreciating a lot what mum and dad. You know, had did done. and um, yeah. That's uh, so when when I guess when you did make your debut, like you know, your parents had literally worked themselves to the bone to give you that opportunity to play footy. Yeah. And then when you make that phone call and you're a bit older and you realise how much they did, you know, sacrifice for you to get there. What was that phone call like? But right, it's actually crazy. Um. So, uh, went in. I debuted 2009, and yep. um, in 2008. My mum passed away. Oh, okay. To cancer, which is you know such a shit. Um, oh, you know it happens. Yeah. It only happens to the nicest people. Yeah, and, mate. Um, what happened though is 2009. So I debuted, and um, the date was actually her birthday. Oh wow! Yeah, so that was that spun me out, and I was thinking, well, what's going on out here? Like, like something's what? yeah. I know she's still around. If that's happening, yep. yeah, yeah. But um, you know, yeah, it was obviously a proud moment for yep. me, and obviously the family and. <laughs> in the game though I uh, broke my wrist and my jaw <laughs> oh, oh, so I don't know what's happening <laughs> <laughs> man but uh, you made your debut bro yeah but I got there, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah so so, so you, you broke your wrist you kept playing yeah so wrist was one that felt the sorest and um, it was the way I like caught a ball and landed on it and yep. I, I was able to keep like keep on playing it was like a small yep. Not, yeah, it wasn't like a bone sticking out. It was like a fracture. Hair, hairline fracture, yeah. And that was the same with my jaw. Like, I got clipped in a tackle 
and it wasn't like down here it was you know up yep. here so it just felt like it was a bruise <sighs> But still, yeah, still a, certainly a memory of. <laughs> but no, you know what it was? It was your mum looking down and saying, "Remember this moment, yeah. son." <laughs> no matter what. Remember those times you, uh, <laughs> yeah, you were complaining. Yeah. You know how cheeky you were, son. Yeah, yeah. yeah well, now I gotcha. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh certainly, man, yeah. no, that's beautiful. That you like. What a, what a crazy set of events for that's everything to lead was, to yeah. that. Yeah, it certainly was, and. Um, yeah, it still spins me out to this day. Oh man, that's been that's been a mere. Like it, it's it's so I guess it's just such a good thing, you know. Like it kind of reaffirms like maybe there is. She's obviously looking out for you. There's yeah, something yeah. going on there, you know. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's certainly, it's nice to think that. Yeah, yeah. Far oh, yeah. out, man. That's cool. So you know, in into the was it you know obviously losing her was it did that it push you harder to pursue your dream of NRL you know was she a huge supporter of your footy and when you did lose her was it a hard time you know obviously it was a hard time but as in did you did that propel you further to do what you've done and achieved yeah oh of course I reckon um, certainly when that happened it you know drove me more inside yeah but also yeah obviously when I was growing up like mum and dad came to all my games mm. like they both came and they both you know if it was out north of Brisbane or mm. if we had a carnival north Queensland they'd it's do crazy, their best eh? to get there yeah, you know yeah. I mean? and yeah just I guess appreciating all that and then yeah getting to to play at the elite level and it's crazy yeah. you think like there, she was your mother was working two jobs and your dad was a builder and they were still finding time to get to every single game yeah exactly you know every single taking you to every single training like you look at those days like I mean it's just crazy. like the amount of sacrifices you know what I mean yeah. same with my mum you know she was working you know she would drive you know the kids to like she'd drive this, my sister to you know netball and then the other sister to touch footy and then my brother was you know to yeah. running and then me to soccer and it's just like man like what they do is crazy but yeah so you know so you made your debut and how many games did you play that year? Just that one Just that one Yeah so I um which is even played crazier. that game, yeah, 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 yeah. I know. I played that game. Um, I ended up doing my knee that year okay. as well. Uh, yep. Came back from the injuries in the first game, and I was playing twenties, and then yeah, did my knee. Yep. So I missed that year. Then came back 2010, mm. and started the season. Yeah, you were in the sense. And then yeah, you, you know, you want to hear something funny? <laughs> Do you remember it? <laughs> what <laughs> What happened before the round one game? The the team run before it. You probably don't remember it. It was between it happened between me and you. <laughs> Wait, no, no. Tell me it. Tell me it. You split me. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it were trying. It was like I think it's like here or here or maybe even there. Yeah. So it was a it was a, it was a captain run. It was a captain's run in Suncorp <laughs> before round one, <laughs> and we were doing like like oh, bro. literally it wasn't even contact. It wasn't even contact. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's coming back to me now. Yeah, oh, it wasn't even contact. So, and, uh, <laughs> yeah. So anyway, you can tell the story if you if you remember it. I may only remember that. Did you tape it up or something? Like we, I remember you were split. I was split and just bleeding, like just blood everyone. Everyone was like laughing, and you were like, oh, "Man, I'm so sorry, bro. I'm so sorry." Yeah, and because it was a uh, like, so we were just like, so usually when you do like it a was, captain's run, it was a three on two. Yeah, and like usually what you'll do is you just like two handed tag someone or like just wrap <laughs> them up. Like you just <laughs> you just wrap them up. Anyway, like the ball comes to me in a three on two. I think I'm the third guy. You slide off the second defender onto the third <laughs> defender, and you just like just wrap me up. You don't go in hard or yeah. anything, and it just your your head just goes boom. <laughs> And I just and I'm oh, just like man. I'm like oh my god no please no please no and then yeah there's just blood just leaking down and I'm like oh god you're yeah. like, bro, I'm so sorry bro I do remember that because it was at Suncorp wasn't it yeah it was yeah, at Suncorp yeah. the captain's run <laughs> <laughs> and we never do the captain's run at Suncorp I know oh, <laughs> but, I'm still concussed bro there's actually a few memories but yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. so um, yeah that, that was uh, I, I remember that quite vividly and we do that in that round one game we went on it was like packed sold out stadium fifty thousand people. Cowboys. So that was your second NRL game. Yeah, yeah. And we won it twenty six to twenty or something like that. Yeah, it was. Um, and I remember. I think it was Corey Norman's debut. Debut. It, it was you and debut. you and Senators Antonio Winstein on the other wing. Me and yeah. Israel Folau and me on the other wing. Dra was injured. Yeah, Alex, yeah. I think Alex 
Lexi made his debut, or Matt Gillette made his debut, Jack Reed made his debut. Yeah. I think Andrew McCulloch played. Like, it was ridiculous. But Peter Wallace. A few names there, right? Oh, man, like, 100%. Looking at today. Yeah. Uh, who, was, who else was there? Number, who was their number six that year? Because he had Peter Wallace. Was Lockie still Lockie. playing? Yeah. Oh, okay. So 2010? Or yeah, 2010. Yeah. Yeah, he was still playing then. Yeah. And then he retired 2011. Yeah, fuck. Yeah, we can talk about that later. About that one. <laughs> Why do you keep injuring blokes? Yeah, right? oh, well, I don't know. <laughs> um, so yeah, you 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 played much more games in 2010. You didn't. You, you played most of the year, didn't you? Yeah. Oh, so what? I, I played probably like half and half. Yep. And I, with the twenties as well. And you you made the under twenties side as well, the NYC side. Oh, I made the. Um, Junior Kangaroos side actually. Oh, okay. Yeah, yep. so I played for Australia. And oh, that really? was at the end of that year. Yep. And then I, I guess, yeah, that was sort of like the confirmation that I wanted to play for New Zealand. Oh, and I put that Australian jersey on. We played New Zealand. Um, I felt I just didn't. I didn't feel right. Like I felt like oh, like this doesn't it, like they don't get like, me wrong. It you know it was good to was be an selected yep. and, and everything. And there was actually you know it's quite a good side. Yep. Yeah, but I, I, that, was, that was the moment that I saw that um, yeah I wanted to play for the Kiwis one day. And yep, and also yeah, putting on that jersey, we're kind of like this doesn't. I, I should be in a black jersey here. Yeah, it didn't feel right. Like I, it was and they were doing the weird as feeling. Well. Yeah, yeah, they did the hucker and everything, and yep. um, yeah, yeah, I still wanted to win the game. But, yeah, it was, um, it's footy, it's footy. But yeah, I just thought you know it would be a dream to to be wearing that the jersey. Kiwi jersey. Yeah. And so how long after that did you say, all right, um, I want to, you know, pledge my kind of allegiance to... New Zealand? Yeah, yeah so Zealand. it was after that I, I started, you know, speaking to my manager because I didn't know what to do. And then yep. I think he sort of took took care of it all. And then I 2011 came and I think that was probably my... Um, my stepped up from the year before played a full time yeah I was managed yeah. to play every game that year yep and that was the year I debuted actually for the Kiwi so yep yeah but long Happened. before that so 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 you um, like remember specifically after that game going to your manager and saying I, I'd like it was an honour to play for Australia but I don't want to be selected for Australia anymore like as you know I yeah. want to be selected for the Kiwis yeah yeah um, I I'd sort of talked to him before that even, as well when oh, okay. I was um like first year out of school, I was like, "Oh, I might go to kid like, you know." Yeah. Started like thinking about it and everything, yeah. and yeah, I was at that, that point I knew, and then when as the season came around as well, I like made sure I was like, "Oh, yeah, I want to oh, so you made sure, yeah. okay, yeah." Because what you know, knowing you as a mate, you're, you're a pretty cruisy guy, so you're not like, yeah, like if it was me, I'm an anal, so I'd be like, oh, <laughs> this. And my manager would be like, "Fuck, who are you? I didn't even know you." Yeah, nah, nah, you some little shit, Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so so you act, that's 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 pretty. Uh, I guess like telling that you know putting on that jersey, you could really you just felt it. Yeah, it just shows you how you know how important obviously your Kiwi heritage is to you. Yeah, I um, yeah, like I I, I just knew and. I wanted to one day represent them, like yep. New Zealand, and you know I'm sure that's the same with a lot of players. Yep. I think Kieran Foran had a similar experience. Yep. Um, where yeah, boys that have come through the Australian system, you know, have yeah, like represented Australia in a junior age or whatever. Yep. And, and then decided. Decided, that. yeah. Um, so obviously, yeah, for me, yeah, I just saw it as a, a massive goal and a dream and. Mm get to yeah get to live that dream and you know the, for people that you know may be listening and and may not be have as vivid memory you know a guy like yourself that was one of the young guys this is an outside looking in you'd never say this about yourself but this is from my perspective you were a young guy that at that age you were playing you had such potential and you were that good of a footy player that you really did have a possibility of playing for australia in the future as in you had it wasn't just like you were picking the kiwis because it was an easier side to make as a young gun you were if you're in that junior Kiwis, if you're in the junior kangaroo side, there is an extremely good chance that eventually you'll play for Australia in the NRL. So it's like, you know, it's pretty clear that you made that decision actively to play for Kiwis. You know, it was definitely a passion thing rather than a, oh, you know, I'll pick the Kiwis instead of the Australian side because of this or that kind of thing. So yeah, a lot of yeah, um, yeah. Well, uh, yeah, like I saw it as a, um, yeah, I, I didn't expect to get picked straight away or anything. Like, yeah, I yeah. just saw it as like. If I ever do get a chance to do that, like that's yep. one thing I want to do. Yeah, you know, definitely. I look get to yeah, really appreciate it. Yeah, and so I guess you know you make you make your debut and and it's a beautiful thing and on your 
your mother's pa- uh, birthday. When you made your debut for your Kiwi for the Kiwis, how special was that for you? When you get the phone call, and obviously, you know, it was special for you to debut for NRL, but to debut for your mother's homeland, what was yeah. that like for you? Yeah, uh, there's so many factors. Like obviously, personally wanting to wear it, and then you know, um, dad and mum mm. coming from you know New Zealand, all my family in New Zealand, and obviously mum passing away, getting mm. getting to represent her as well. Um, yeah, it was quite emotional. Um, I remember the game, but <laughs> we got towed up. Oh really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh man. Well, it was actually in Newcastle. So yep, and it was actually just gone like how we played the test a couple of weeks ago oh, in okay, Newcastle so, yep. so like going back there sort of brought back that feeling oh okay but um that's probably why you play so mad <laughs> just, just remember getting yeah, down had that like <laughs> bad taste there yeah um yeah yeah so obviously getting the call and first like I didn't know I was going to be playing so I thought I was in the squad mm. and I was, so I was stoked yep and um it was the lead up to the Four Nations and they said oh we're going to have a test there's a test match in Newcastle and then I found out yeah I was you know playing and then i was yeah just stoked and yeah pretty much a buzz eh? like even the game like just, just a went buzz so quick yeah yeah what was it like that you know when you when you pull that jersey on because you wouldn't have had the jersey on that would have been the first time you ever pulled the kiwi jersey on yeah yeah the first time and um yeah no it was crazy so um obviously we were playing yeah against australia and Mm. It felt weird as well to be playing against you know, like teammates that were in the Australian, yeah, which yeah. was obviously Lockie and yep. Sammy Thide and you know they had heaps of players back then too. Like they still yeah. do now, but there was a few years where we lost, like we didn't have as many players. But it was what it would have been Sammy Thide, Lockie, I think Drell Trojo, was in there. Drell. Yeah, um, was there any banter between you and Drell? <laughs> he, I don't think he played that game, but there would have been. Yeah, I don't know the time, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> Drell. He's a legend. I love Drell. Um, yeah, so so you play for the Kiwis, and you, so so you 2011 was kind of like your your breakout year. You played every game, you know, you you cemented a spot as a first grader. Yeah. And then 2000 and what was it? 12. 2012. You. What happened in 2012? Did um, you play? Yeah, I, I think you? played every game. Okay. Played so. every game as good. So it was actually quite a good year as well, um, and re- got to represent New Zealand again. Yep. And. It was actually a funny year because I was. That's when it sort of came out that I was going to go to the Dragons. Yeah. So that's all. For looking back now, I feel like, um, I guess it sort of disrupted it. But in saying that, like it, like yeah, I was doing my job and everything, and um, mm. yeah, I was still trying to enjoy that last bit at the Broncos. Yeah. So what, what was the re- like? You know, when you did decide to go to the Dragons, what was the reason? You know, what was the catalyst for? all right i want to leave the broncos and go to the dragons was it because you wanted opportunity or, or you know what was it yeah I, I remember at the time uh like i wanted to play fullback i think yeah yeah i just had that in my head yeah and um at the time broncos had josh hoffman yeah and you know he's a good player so i i just sort of assumed like oh if i'm gonna have to wait you know yeah and they had Corey I, norman as well yeah Corey norman yeah and um so I, um, yeah, just sort of went out on a limb and um, took that opportunity and ended up, yeah, so went to the Dragons the following year. Yep. And what was that like? You know, when you did, you know, first, this, this was your first club outside of the Dragons. Uh, yep. Sorry, outside of the Broncos. What was it, you know, the change like for you? Yeah, it was massive. Yeah, um, uh, yeah, it was actually crazy. So I sort of felt like I had to grow up a lot, like yep. leaving Brisbane. Um, yeah, went down to the Dragons with my partner and we were expecting our first baby oh wow yeah, so yeah. everything's happening at once so it was then. actually like a, not just changing club but there was like a, quite a few um, you know things on its way so yeah like external factors that were pushing yeah. you to grow up to be a man kind of thing yeah so we had um, our little boy he was due in November yep and I um, so cute bro yeah he no, looks he's, like he's just got the same <laughs> eyes as you bro this is crazy yeah unfortunately <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, man. So I, all I remember was just like a crazy time. Yeah. And once I got down to the Dragons, um, yeah, I so said everything sort of fell into place um, mm. until we started playing. And then we lost the first three, I think. Yep. And then we won. And then I did my knee. And yeah. then that was it. Like I missed the whole year. So that was like, it ended up becoming a frustrating year, that yeah, first year yeah. of the Dragons. Yep. And, 
obviously going there to play fullback and then um, I remember the Dragons where, while I was injured the, like they sort of needed someone yeah, there back. and then yeah. they signed Dukes yep. uh, Dugan and um, obviously that's, that was good you know for the club but for you for double blow so then I was like oh like oh well, you know won't get to play fullback and I can't even play now yeah. so I'm just like can't my, even prove my, it. Yeah. You know, my head was just like this yep but um, and saying that like that time away you know you, like you feel like when you're away from something that you love as as painful as it is like you actually learn you mm. learn a lot about yourself and yeah um, yeah the following year 2014 I came and I played centre and I actually you know love it like really enjoyed it yeah I um I um obviously you know tried tried train hard and everything mm. leading up to coming back and because you've always been a really good trainer like you've always been up there when it comes to you know top in 40 meters usually in top one or two or three you know strength wise you're usually up in the top fitness what you know what i mean so training's never been an issue for you it's just yeah i, th- I think just missing you know miss playing and trying the... to show people what i could have done because i felt like i i went to the dragons you know with a bit of hype but i i didn't get to show them you know yeah, what i could have yeah. Or like contributed and yeah well and you, you know you get bought to to fill this fullback role because Darius had moved on yeah. to the, to the uh, Knights yeah and then you play the few games and you get injured you, there is you know people forget that you, you know it is you get paid well to play footy but most footy players want to just play good footy and when you can't do that it's yeah it's so tough that's like, what yeah that's what sort of gets to you but um was it you know when when they were going to sign uh, when they did announce that they were going to sign Dugan what was that like for you you know mentally you know you said it was tough earlier but you know, yeah what was what were the thoughts going through your head were you like you know what's, yeah you know? yeah oh, so I guess all I was thinking was like oh wow, I've got my knee my knee's done I've you know, got a long way ahead till I can get back out there then then I guess losing a position that I thought I had yeah. at the time um, was even more frustrating and like I, I knew there was nothing I could do even if you played the best footy you've ever played, because yeah. he's an origin fullback. Like, oh, he's a great, you know? great player, yeah. and um, you know he's still yeah been a great addition to the club. Yeah. Um, but I feel like at the time, you know, without even knowing, I, I probably took a lot of um, my frustration, like out of my missus, as in like um, the way I was probably yeah like, like moping selfish. around the house. Yeah, and, yeah. You know, probably just being short with her, and I think she's you know she's played a big role. Oh man, like a massive role in, um, I guess, me being here today. Oh man, I completely, career. completely relate. You know, when periods of my life when I was down, same thing. Yeah. Your missus just seems to be able to handle. Like, you know, you're you're grumpy. You don't talk much. You're selfish. What you think about is your, you know, yeah. especially with a footy career because it's such a a big deal. Yeah, they're so they're so good at being able to put their own issues aside and taking care of you. When, yeah, I know. When you really yeah. don't deserve it because you've been a little <laughs> piece of shit. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Um, so, yeah, did she help you quite a lot through that period, your missus? Yeah, she did. Yeah. Um, you know, and it, all it was was just like little things like um, taking my mind off yeah. what it was and focusing on the now. Yep. You know, um, what's what I can actually do right now instead of worrying about, you know, what's going to happen and things well, you can't it was control. Like, you know, six months. Yep. So only to, yeah, so she helped helped me massively, and then when 2014 came, you know, it was, it, looking back, it was probably like a good thing that it happened because it, yeah, once again made me want it more and yep. um, started. Yeah, I played centre and I loved it, and I managed to yeah make the Kiwi team again. Yep. So oh, it was almost like I was back to where I was. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, and obviously, and you know, I was sort of thankful, but yeah, it was just like a weird, weird year into like a down here then up to here <laughs> yeah yeah and i guess also you know you don't, you don't notice it at the time but it 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 clearly it clearly brought you and your partner together you know like yeah you know off the field brought you together and made you realize how appreciative you are of her as a you know because every, when everything's going well yeah you don't necessarily appreciate what's yeah exactly outside of footy exactly. whereas like you know you look like you look back on it now and you say you know that maybe that was a moment that did bring you and your partner together and Obviously, yeah. she helped you a lot, and now you got kids together and all that. So, yeah, man, yeah, man, friggin' footy, the roller coaster. Yeah, right? it is. It's such a roller coaster, oh, man. Bro. But you know, love it. <laughs> oh, bro. Um, okay, so yeah, you get back to playing center. Yep. And I guess what was the reason? You know, so then you, you two thousand to fourteen, you play. Was it fourteen? You played some good footy for for the Dragons. Yeah. 
And then you moved to the Sharks. What was the, yeah. the reason for that? Were you just like, I need uh, to try something new, or what, what was the? So yeah, it came the end of the year, and I was, as far as I knew, I was going to be a, a Dragon for 2015. Yep. And then um, went on the Four Nations. So went away with the New Zealand team again in the off season, and we went to uh, the Four Nations. Mm. And um, it was it was seriously over like a, a couple of weeks. Um, that the dragons were under a bit of pressure with the salary cap, oh, okay. and they they had to let, uh, like, they had to reshuffle the, the um, group around, whereas they would have been over. Yeah, or, you yeah. Know, that sort of the business side of it. Yeah. And um, somehow I sort of got pulled into it, and then um, the sharks came. Well, you know, where they were there, and they had a, you know, they offered Decent me, offer and um, it sort of made sense at the time because we were living in Cronulla, and um, I just felt like, oh, you know, I felt like it was the right thing to do you know and um and you had a relationship with steve price who was his yeah. assistant coach now with yeah yeah so he's he was an assistant coach like he was set to be the assistant coach as yep. well as well as um drewy. You know, a few of the, yeah drewy yeah and um so i sort of had you know i knew knew the trainers and that and, and they could recommend you as well yeah um i think they i'm not sure like but i think they did yeah and, yeah um yeah man i jumped on board and you know i think it was a really good move and um yeah, I'm a shark. <laughs> yeah, you're a shark. Now, and not, you know, the, the way the salary cap works, you know, you look, you look at the Dragons now and they still don't really have a high-profile, you know, centre wing that I know of. They've, you know, like a lot of uh, clubs, when they're in a building phase, they'll usually, their centre and wings, they'll put younger, more inexperienced, cheaper guys there yeah. whilst they're trying to build a team up and then eventually they can start. So when it does come time to squeeze a salary cap, it's usually centre wingers. Yeah, get squeezed out. I mean, if, if especially an experienced one like yourself, Kiwi one that that does have a bit more value to you, and also you can find another club, so it's not a bigger blow for yourself personally. Yeah, so I think at the time as well, I think Brett Morris had also, oh, I think his was you know all through the media, like yeah, probably yeah. leading up towards the end of the year that he was going to be going, yeah, because of that, as then and then um, yeah, so like you said, like um, me and Brett left. And, they, and then Gypsy obviously stayed. he went on to where he went, and then yep. yeah, Gypsy stayed. Yep. Um, yeah. So you're um, you moved to the Sharks, and it's already I guess a you know people there, you know, with Stephen Price and, and Drew the trainer. Um, was was that the key fact? Did you have interest from other clubs? Was it anywhere else that you were considering going, or was it just the Sharks that you kind of you know wanted to stay on the you know the, the, the kind of beachy area? Yeah, yeah. So at the time, I was I was actually yeah, I was away on the for four nations for yep. New Zealand so this all sort of happened yeah over a couple of weeks um, yeah I think uh, I sort of left it up to my manager like I um, it sort of come about yeah I got dragged into it and then um, he my manager said oh look the, sh the sharks are really really interested and yep. um, you know what are your thoughts and then that's sort of where it took off um, you know I, I, I saw like that year, 2014 year, I saw it like it was a tough year for the club. Yeah. And then I, you know, I saw like they just got a new CEO, uh, Lyle Gorman. He was the Wanderers CEO, oh, so and he, he done an he awesome job. Yep. Yeah, yeah. He took them from down here to up there. Yeah. And also, you know, they'd signed McEnnis, Ben Barber. Yeah. And I saw, so I was like, um, you know, I just saw this opportunity as well, and you know, I just felt like everything was sort of, yeah, sliding into place and. Um, yeah, man, I sort of just took that chance again, and yeah. Was it tough, like being told, "Oh, you're out of all the people in the squad, you're the one we've got to get"? We, we get, or was was it like, was it like, um, here's a few of these, here's a few of the guys in the squad we're going to, and asking to, yeah, and you're you're one of them, or was it that were they kind of just like, um, you know, we need you to go, or was it your choice? You know what I mean? What was the conversation like with them? Yeah, no, it was my decision. Yeah. Um, obviously the club. They had to um, it was the salary someone, cap, yep. you know, all that side of things. Um, I think there, yeah, there was like a group of players, and all I sort of knew was just from the media. Like the media were like, "Oh, like these these players could be going." Oh, because really? Of this. So, and I obviously my manager was just telling me, yep. you know, what he knew, and um, yeah, man. So I, I I just saw it as an opportunity, not really a, a negative. Um, oh, okay, so you you were in a frame of mind of like you know yeah. what, I'm playing good footy, it's all good kind yeah, of yeah. Or like I just um, you know felt what was right for not only me but my family at the time and yep. we we lived in Cronulla. Oh, so you already lived there. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, and I just saw it. Um, 
yeah, I saw it as an opportunity, and, yep. and um, yeah, just take took that chance. And then I mean, now is like I honestly reckon he's a probably top three ch- like likely to win the premiership. You're playing unbelievable football. What's it been like being a part of the Cronulla Sharks that have gone from you know a struggling side in 2011 with all the peptide drama. Now you you have had, you have a ridiculous side like you saw you know Luke Lewis, Fafita, Wade Graham, Bird, Holmes, Barber, yourself, Fecky, like the list goes on like you, Maloney, Townsend's playing. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like your side is yeah. you could pick probably six or seven guys in there arguably and put them in the New South Wales side if you really yeah. wanted to. So what's what's the journey been like? You know, being a part of that. Yeah, oh, it's been awesome. You yeah. know, I love it. Love it at the Sharks. Um, like you said like you've got a great roster and I, I it doesn't come around often if you know what I mean like I, yeah. you know when you're at the Broncos as well like there was I think each club sort of goes through that certain period where they are able to get a good yep. you know roster looking at the roster together yep. and I, I, yeah I feel like this is one of these years you know in, in saying that um, you know it's it's still quite early in the season yeah yeah um, uh, you know every every there's always a hiccup somewhere along the line. Yep. So, um, yeah, for us, it's just a matter, matter of keeping our head down and um, making sure we're working hard at training. I mean, yep. uh, yeah, like well, I'm personally trying to, yeah, just keep improving my game. Yep. You know, there's always something to work on. And, you know, what's has there been any difference in training between, you know, this year and last year? Because, like, this year, when you guys put it on, you just put it on. Like, the example was with the Broncos in that first half. You was you were unstoppable, and then you go and put sixty whatever on the nights. Is there any difference? Is it just confidence? Like what? What could you, if you had to say, pinpoint one difference between this year's sharks and last year's sharks? What do you reckon it would be? Yeah, I think um, well, certainly the addition of um, Chad and Jimmy. Yeah. Uh, I guess you know last year nothing like Birdie was in there, and also we had Robbo, and yep. they did a good great job. And I think it's just. Having Chad and Jimmy have it sort of not necessarily made us better, but like changed us the way we play. Yeah, and it's suited which is sort of else. yeah yep. ben- benefit everyone. Yeah. So yeah, man, no, it's been um, it's been good, and I, you know I, I feel like we, as a team we still have a, a lot more to improve on, which is yep. I guess scary to think, but also exciting. I mean, imagine imagine Sharkies win a premiership. Like, how yeah, crazy man. would that be, bro? <laughs> well, just you know, from having, you know the start we've had. Yep. You know, in, and in the Shire, you, you certainly notice a lot of people, you know, wearing their, proudly wearing their, you know, Sharks colours yeah. around and also coming up to you and saying, you know, talking about it, you know, that yep. you can tell they're really, you know, passionate about it and I guess, you know, the fans have been through a lot there. Oh, bro. So. <laughs> so do you still have the same CEO as, as uh, like, when you came to the club? Yeah, yeah, so uh, Lyle, this is Lyle, and yep. the second year is the same as mine. Second so year. W- what's he like as a, as a man, like, you know, he, taking the Wanderers to what they are, like, that, that is, yeah, what an man. achievement, like, what an achievement. And now you guys, you guys are actually, yeah. from what I know, is you, you're one of the financially best positioned clubs in the comp now. Yeah. Because you sold off that uh, back area of the club, like, I could have my facts wrong here, but I'm assuming they're, they're right. But, yeah, so what's he like as a man? What, what, do you, what does he do different that maybe other clubs don't really do? Yeah, uh, not too sure. But uh, <laughs> wish I knew. I'd go he, and freaking start a club and kill it. <laughs> <laughs> I guess when I, you know, the times that I've spoken to him, he's a big believer in um, belief. Yeah. You know, like people talk about it, but you know, actually trying to put it into actions. And I, I think he's he tries to you know drive that through the whole club. You know, from staff all the way down to the under twenties or that the SG ball okay. team. Yep. About you know everyone being on the same page and believing. Yep. And, um, you know, also he's a smart man. And, yeah, what, what he done at the Wanderers, um, I, he certainly brought a lot of that over to the Sharks because I was reading something that um, last year we, we had our rating, you know, like the game day atmosphere. So for fans being at the at the oh, yep, at yep. A NRL game, ours was one of the best. Yeah, yeah, okay. So, yeah, credit to him. He's doing a great job there. And, yeah. It's, um, it is, a, the Shire is actually a good ground to go and watch footy at. You yeah. Know, it's like a good atmosphere. you got the, I think there's like a group of, 
like dudes that like play instruments and shit yeah man I, I can hear them in the game they got like the drums now yeah yeah it's, it's actually mad. mad like you hear it you're like yeah. it's like a, it's like a mad soccer like a hectic soccer stadium it, it almost is like, maybe it's a, like he's got a group of Wanderers fans <laughs> and he takes them to each yeah. club he pays them like a wage wear this jersey yeah, yeah. and just go out there and go skits yeah lift the atmosphere yeah because they were at they were at um, when you played West Tigers yeah and they were out there as well I was there um, asking people questions yeah man um, so what's it like mean for, for yourself like witnessing guys like Holmes come out and score four tries it's actually um, there's a locker room curse the last three guests three out of four guests have one man in the match seriously yeah oh, uh, I'm in the right bro, direction you're, you're in, you're in. <laughs> nah um, so uh, Jordan Rankin man of the match yeah yeah Corey Norman man of the match Valentine yep. Holmes man of the match uh, the week they've come on, the, the week the show has been aired, yeah, they get me in the match. So just tell me when you want. So you, bro, you got the magic. Yeah, it's all me, bro. It must be me. <laughs> um, so what's it like, as well as with Barber watching Barber get like, it is it is legitimate to say, you know, maybe not exactly there yet, but it is legitimate to say that he is pretty much at 2012 standard again. Yeah. What's that been like seeing brother Barber do that? Like, is it just been so good to watch him get his form back? Yeah, man. Nah, yeah. It's, he's done. You know. I think um, he hasn't just like clicked his fingers and he's back. Oh, no he's way. put in a lot of hard work. Yeah, yep. I think last preseason was a good example. He, um, you know, he did everything. He he was in the gym, you know, on the field. Yeah, and you know, I guess also, you know, we got a such a, you know, we got a good backline there and a lot of depth. I think us all um, pushing each other, yeah, almost yeah. like competing with each other, yeah, has helped. Yeah, definitely. And, I mean, uh, look at yourself. You, you were before the Kiwis game. You're coming up 14. Yeah. And now you're four. You know, and, and you're playing the best footy of your, your life. And that I guess that healthy healthy competition has kind of brought that out in you. Yeah, it was you know like sometimes it can be intimidating for players. You know, like because you're worrying about your position, but it it makes you um, I guess yeah compete for it. Yep. In a way. How, how what's um you know Flanagan been like in kind of nurturing that competitive attitude, but also making sure that everyone is putting the team before their own position is that something he kind of speaks about or yeah um, yeah he does actually I think because you know we've got a, quite a few leaders in the team yep um, it's a matter of yeah getting everyone on the same page and I think he's doing a great job yep um, you know he he can almost leave a lot up to like you know the senior players oh so he leaves a lot of responsibility to them to kind of control yeah I think we, we sort of have it player driven yep and um, you know everyone is on the same page as and we know what we want to do you know like everyone wants to win the yep. grand final but you know we want to be we sort of set team standards in a way you, and you genuinely all buy into it yeah, we, yeah and I think that's what you know that's one reason why we've had a, you know such a good start mm. so I hope yeah the, I guess the goal is to to keep it consistently there and yep improve um, and Oh, yeah, I want to talk about the uh, the the Darren Lockie's last game. <laughs> I knew it was coming. Oh, uh, bro. I, 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 you, you, you shouldn't have said anything. I shouldn't have. I should because I didn't. I didn't remember it. Didn't until you? you said something. I swear to God, bro. Yeah. I swear to God. I mean, like we laugh about it, but that's gonna like. Does it rattle you a bit? Like you're like fuck, or are you just like man, I, it's not, I can't help it. Like you know what I mean? Yeah, oh, I certainly laugh about it. Even at the time, um, I sort of laughed about it. But um, so yeah, obviously looking back, what happened was I um, it was the semi final yeah against the Dragons yeah and yeah they put up a bomb. I was at fullback yeah and um, Lock- Lockie was yeah in his position tracking back. he he was actually tracking back and um, we both went for the ball but I jumped high and I um, need him in the yep. jaw and um, yeah man I, I didn't obviously no one knew at the time yeah but then yeah. it wasn't until after the game. Um, found oh, out he has okay, a, um, true. had a like his jaw was just fully like, gone yeah. but I, I mean uh, lucky he didn't go off or anything nah which is, which is brave of him but also good for you because like if he yeah. had gone off then that would oh, be man. worse for you I know and I think there was still quite a bit of time left in the game yeah. and he went on to um, not only did we he like kicked the winning field goal in that game and then it was obviously his last home game yep. or game at Suncorp anyway so it was always it was a pretty big deal yep and then yeah, man, found out he couldn't play like the prelim next yep. the next week, and then yeah, man, I was like, quite a big. Um, oh really? Yeah. There's nothing like 
you're, you're, you're trying to catch a ball. Like, what are you supposed to do? You're yeah, like, yeah. Like, 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 yeah. Obviously, I thought that was, it was mine. <laughs> <laughs> I called it. I it. <laughs> but you know, it's like not ironic. Like, it's kind of ironic. Is like it kind of cements how much of a warrior this dude is. Like, how good he was. Like, oh man, he broke his jaw in his last game. Yeah. and went on to win with a field goal. He he kicked the winning field goal with a in broken overtime. jaw. Yeah, like I mean that the, the amount of mental toughness it would take yeah to do that. And also play you're playing at number 6 so you're getting guys run at you all game long. You're tackling people yeah. with a broken jaw. And then he kicks field goals to win it, you know? Like it kind of it it kind of feels like a fitting send off for such a warrior, like such a gladiator yeah, like man. to to be able to just show you how mentally tough this guy was. And that, yeah, that's exactly what he was. You yeah. know, he's the ultimate competitor. Like, oh man, professional and leader on the field. You know, he was one yep. of those players that if he said something, <laughs> I was like, "Yep, yep oh, I'll 100%. do that." <laughs> he didn't talk often, but when he did, you were just you heard like, it, man. Yeah, yeah. Like he, you just hear this. <sighs> and as soon as you heard that voice, everyone would go, oh, "Lockie's <laughs> talking." <laughs> Lockie's talking. Everyone, shut the fuck up, Lockie's yeah, talking. Man. <laughs> and, yeah, man. Yeah, hundred percent, bro. He was the man. The man. Um, so what's, uh, you know, when you look back on your footy career, what's something that you kind of, a positive memory in footy that you think of, like, when you, th- you think of a, good, a positive memory, when someone says, what's your best memory in rugby league, what's the first thing that pops in your head? Um, I guess if we have had a, been in grand final, yep. you know, that would be up there, but, um, you know, hopefully in the near future. But yep. um, I guess the personal, you know, like personal goal and achievement, same, like, yeah, representing New Zealand. Yep. Um, so when you pulled that jersey on, that was yeah, your man. proudest moment. Yeah, definitely. Yep. Just being able to, you know, obviously getting to represent a country as well as um, getting to challenge myself, you know, at that elite level. Yep, and play that's against why, the Australian side. That's, yeah, man. Just yep. getting to mix it with the big boys. <laughs> yeah, man. But yeah. What was it like? What's the intensity like, different like compared to an NRL game? Oh, yeah, it's faster. It's definitely faster, but... It's a strange thing, um, you know, like the higher you play, you're obviously playing with better players and that yep. means better players in your team. Yeah. So it almost becomes easier but, yeah, harder in a way. Yeah, like if that so makes sense. So you're playing with players yep. that can run faster on your team but, um, mm. yeah, also you're defending that as well. So yeah, it's yeah. just a strange feeling but it's 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 a certainly, a, you know, it's a great challenge. Yeah, and I guess also, you know, you're not having to worry as much about your inside man missing a tackle or because yeah. everyone's at a higher quality. Yeah, you know, exactly. the ball the ball that you catch is gonna be here all the time. Yeah, it's always gonna here, be here, yeah. You know, or up there and like, you know, the lines you run are always you know what I mean? So yeah, yeah you're right. Like some things would be easier. I guess the only thing that would be really harder is defending Yeah, exactly them, really, when you think about it. Yeah. You know, obviously the fast you know, the fitness the pace of the game. Yeah. Um, craziest memory in rugby league? Craziest, like you'd, where uh, you just like, or you could even craziest memory growing up. Do you have any memories as a kid growing up where you know you look back and you laugh about it now, or maybe a memory with, you know, Lexi, you, you, for example, <laughs> uh, when we brought that uh, blow up, that blow up, uh, oh, the pool, <laughs> <laughs> uh, we, we we couldn't, we didn't you know can how to tell a story. Uh, you can tell a story. So got, we, we brought a, uh, it was a hot as day. We didn't have a pool. Yeah. In Queensland, that, which is when we're all at the Broncos, we went to the shops and brought a blow up pool. <laughs> yeah. So we. We're um. Where did we get from? Oh, Logan. It was, it was yeah. Logan. The Browns Plains. And Browns like. Plains. We got this pool. Yeah. And we wanted. I remember we wanted to blow it up first, so we took it to my house, <laughs> which was it wasn't far from Lexi's at all. So yeah. my dad had a compressor. Yep. So instead of us all like putting the lips around <laughs> and trying to uh, blow the thing, um, we pumped it up, and then we were like, oh, bro, it's actually too big, eh? And then, <laughs> so there was four of us. <laughs> And if you think about it, like a blow-up pool, it, it could fit on the top of a car. <laughs> and there was four of us, so we're thinking, you know, each can hold a side like that, and I'm like that. And then, um, <laughs> well, the thing is, you're at the back. Yeah. I remember you were in the most pain because I forgot I had my aerial up, and it was like sticking up, and so the the pool was like that, but it was like that, and yep. then the wind was just going, making it flat like that. <laughs> and you, you, I remember you like, bro, I can't hold it. <laughs> I was like, I can't hold it anymore. <laughs> and you're like, you were like, just, we're just like two minutes away. Oh, we're nearly there, yeah. I'm like, bro, I literally can't <laughs> hold this anymore. 
<laughs> like, aren't it? Like, we were, we were on, like, busy roads, man, and it was literally, it was like, actually, yeah. flapping in the <laughs> freaking pool on the top. I'm like, I can't do it anymore. Oh, man. Because I think I was holding something, like, for some reason, I might have, like, I was holding something else yeah in my other hand but I don't know what it was I can't remember but yeah I was like oh, I can't bro. do it and you were like just do it it's, like, like, <laughs> it's 500 meters and I'm like I can't I can't oh man and then we got it there we got it there and it was already two like it was like four o'clock so it was cold yeah we didn't end up swimming in it yeah I remember that and then like we, I went back there like two <laughs> weeks later there's all leaves and shit it was the we worst we never idea. even used it. it I saw it like we saw it you know going to be so much better but like the amount of grass and <laughs> oh. dirt that was in it looked <laughs> like yeah bro it was terrible oh. and like by the time we got home it was nearly like yeah night time after so it was, all that it, yeah. Yeah, it was like the day was over so we <laughs> won't get some in it but <laughs> we paid a hundred bucks <laughs> and like we were all like like rookies then too yeah so like we're all on small contracts yeah. like we all well, couldn't afford it yeah, go out yeah. and get a friggin a friggin pool that we never <laughs> even used and then go back there like two weeks later and it's like oh, oh man remember all the carver sessions we had yeah man, the carver so sessions carver. is that something that, what's the have you any Actually, stories um, um, of carver sessions with the Kiwi boys I Ru, when Ruben Wiki he was heavily involved um, he was the one that brought the carver so he was always oh, okay. here on the carver on the yep. carver I remember I um, actually that my the week of my first test, I think it was after the game, or you know a couple of days after the game. Yeah, I was having a carver session. Like there was a few of the boys, and we're like, oh sweet, you know, have some carver, relax. Mm. And I was eating like usually you have like lollies or um, sometimes like whatever like Just apples. Yeah. To to take away that taste, so you have a have a drink and then you know have a bite. Yep. But I ate would have eaten about 10 apples this whole conversation <laughs> I was sitting and then like I just had this last one and then it just hit me you know when you're gonna spew yeah. well, I nearly spewed over everyone I was like <laughs> and then it was coming out and then there was like little bits of apple coming out and then I like just gapped it was to the toilet was that first test as well? yeah yeah. so, so it's sort of the first time like with yeah, the boys yeah. and I you know don't want to look like a nah, yeah yeah you want to sort of make a good impression <laughs> <laughs> and I like just ran by to the toilet and like Bam! With like ten apples in the toilet, and it burnt my throat. What were the boys? The boys spraying you? Was everyone laughing? <laughs> no, nah, no one really knew. And I was like, oh, did like, you I, like it? yeah, yeah. I sort of like, and then just ran off. And then um, <laughs> ran off. Was, came, there, was everyone like, why did you run off for? <laughs> yeah. Oh, so I came back. Everyone's pretty much relaxed though. So, yeah, so yeah. no one sort of knew. And then came and sat down. And I just rattled. <laughs> everywhere <laughs> <laughs> oh far out man I want to ask a few of the boys this favourite rapper of all time favourite rapper yep um, I'm on that Kendrick Kendrick, Kendrick? Buzz, yeah man all like time him. Oh, I'm going to say all time like recently just getting on his buzz you know what what he raps about is, is, oh it's crazy so man. you're a, you're a Kendrick over J. Cole yeah it's, it's a hard call bro because I, yep. I like listening to J. Cole but He's, I'm a Kendrick man have you seen them live before Nah, I haven't actually. I've seen uh, J. Cole, Kendrick, and Eminem live Rapture at the stadium. Yeah. How was, was that? Crazy. It was the best ex- yeah. one of the best experiences of my life, man. 80,000 people packed stadium. J. Cole comes on, kills it. Sounds exactly like his album. Exactly. Yeah. Then Kendrick comes on, and it's just like, this can't get any better. This literally can't get any better. These guys are crazy. And then Eminem comes on and just... Oh, bro. Yeah. Like he's my number one man. He's my number one. He just slays he's, it like hit after hit after hit. Like you don't realize how many hits he's had and how many yeah. good songs he has. Yeah, it was crazy, man. Um, oh, be mad. And favorite movie of all time. Favorite movie. Um, oh, that's hard. That is a hard one. Eh? Um, I'm gonna say um, for some reason I. I keep thinking about Space Jam. Space Jam? <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, no, I got it, bro. What? Jumanji. Jumanji? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the reason why is because um, I forgot all, all about it and I was reading, I think I follow The Rock on yep. um, Twitter and he came out and said that he's they're going to do another Jumanji. Oh, and okay. he's going to be in it. Yep. And I was like, bro. <laughs> I was like, tell him all the boys in it. And yeah. I was like, remember Jumanji? He's doing another <laughs> one. Like, There's going to be another one. And I was like, well, like, bro, how's it going to play? And I'm like, I just everyone knows the Jumanji yeah 100% yeah. do you know that LeBron's doing a Space Jam yeah I've seen that yeah that would be mad yeah that would be, be mad especially with like technology these days we've got to make it like hectic yeah hectic alright brother it has been awesome man we've been going for an hour 
Sweet, bro. That's like easy, yeah. It's easy, eh? <laughs> yeah. Thanks so much for coming on, brother. Appreciate it. Nah, thanks, bro. See you guys. Boom. That's it. Try Daily Fantasy Footy today. Pick your starting nine with a $60,000 salary cap and enter one of our free competitions with a $50 prize pool. Moneyball.com.au.